Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to part two of our Romanesque castle. This shouldn't take very long. I've gone ahead and added some very light colors to the drawing that I just completed in part one. You can see that I scrubbed the colors in very, very lightly. I didn't do a thing with the sky or with the ground outside of the uh, moat right here. That's fine. Don't worry about it. You can add other details if you want. You just don't have to. Now, remember that when we're dealing with color, one of the color's components is value, light, medium, and dark. So it could be the same color, blue. It might be this blue right here. And so the name of the color is blue, right? That's one of the ways we identify the color. But we also talk about the value of the color. In this case, it's a dark blue. In this case, it's a very light, pale blue. And here's a blue that may be a medium blue somewhere in between. So we rely on our knowledge of value to make things look 3D, just like this Starburst candy looks 3D, even though it's on a flat, flat surface. So getting started, you always begin with the lightest layer of color you can. This layer right there, the lightest one. And you're gonna keep a lot of this light. You're not gonna darken it at all because we need a full range of value, dark to light, to make this work. In this case, I haven't yet decided if my light source, my sun's gonna be on the right or the left side. It could be really anywhere. It could be even here in the middle. But having it on the right or having it on the left right now is a little easier to deal with. So I might go ahead and say that my sun is gonna be over here. Let me put it on the right side. You know why? Because light rhymes with right. So I'm gonna put my sun right there. You actually don't have to put a sun in your picture. That's fine and dandy if you don't. This is just a visual reminder that on the right side, I have my light side and I'm gonna keep the right side of all of these elements facing right. I'm gonna keep them lighter, okay? And that means that anything facing left, this is left, this is left, this is left, 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 left. Those are things that are gonna be a little bit darker, okay? The moat's kind of flat, so I'm not sure about the lighting, but portions of the castle may cause a shadow to fall on the moat, and so we may decide later to do some darkening there. Let's start with the ramparts, these big red uh, walls here. I'm gonna leave the right side light because our light source is on the right, okay? And I'm gonna to go to the left side, and that would be this side to the left of our main line one. Now remember, if you want to, you can still use your ruler and use it for placing darker values like right here and off that darker line, not just the line, but off the darker line, you can then scrub in your deeper, darker colors. Now this is still a very bright red, even though it's darker than the one on the right side of the castle, it's still very bright. And shadows don't tend to be that bright. So you know what I'm gonna do, of course, I'm gonna neutralize this red. I'm gonna add a little bit of green to it. Green is its complementary color on the color wheel. And whenever you mix complementary colors, it's a great way to get a more convincing shadowy effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and darken, being careful to place the color just where I need it. It may be that I won't darken all at once. Everything, I might do it little bit by little bit so I can more easily stop, catch it exactly as I want it exactly uh, when it best looks uh, like it's doing the job of light and dark. So that's pretty good. You notice that every rampart up here has a right and a left side, right and a left side. So of course, every left side is gonna be dark, including this one over here. It's all by itself, but it should be dark also. It's facing left. <clears throat> we use the left vanishing point to draw portions of that line, so that's gonna go dark as well, okay? So let's go ahead and try that uh, little trick that I go ahead and add a little bit of a green to this. Here's a light green, it's got a lot of white in it, let's try that. It will help to neutralize that red, it'll drop its intensity, it won't be nearly as bright, it'll look more well suited, this wall will, to a shadowy side. Now remember, you don't have to build the surface all at once, you can do it gradually, little bit by little bit. That's why I'm pressing kind of lightly right now. And you don't have to be happy with the results right now. Why don't you wait and see how everything works together as it all comes together, okay, as you do more work on the surface. So there you go. That's really a better looking shadowy wall, red wall, than it was before. Before it was just way too bright. Now over here I have a light edge next to lightness, and I wonder if I shouldn't go ahead and drop that down just a little bit in terms of value. In the distance, things in the distance tend to be a little darker. That's just the way light and physics works. So I'll drop a little bit of darkness there. And of course, what I can also do is drop in a little bit of green there too to neutralize that distant edge just a little bit. Turns it a bit more gray. 
And of course, from a distance standpoint, that might be more convincing, having it a little darker at the distance. Okay, the big part of the building is done. The ramparts are done. Remembering that this stays light. Any surface facing the sun is staying light. We're leaving it alone. Let's go to this tower over here. It's in purple. Let's see if I can find that purple. Doesn't matter if I find it or not. I can always put a new color on top of the old, but here it is. And I'm gonna make one side darker than the other. So here I go. Notice I added a little extra section of wall down here because it kind of bugged me that this wall did not continue down beyond the ramparts. So I went ahead and added that in using the left vanishing point and a vertical line. So let's go ahead and darken that. And I'm going to darken a little bit more right here. This is being lower. Maybe there's a little bit of something throwing a deeper shadow on there. That's an awful bright, awfully bright purple. So we may go back and neutralize that. Purple's complement on the wheel is yellow. We might want to add some yellow to that or maybe some orange. Orange has a lot of yellow in it. Let's go ahead and darken this edge. When I'm going ahead and pressing harder, I am a little more careful. When I first start out with color, I press lightly and I move fast. And you can see some of the mistakes I make, but they're very minor mistakes. They're easy to correct. I can even easily erase them. Here's that deeper purple over here on the left side, left side, looking pretty good. Now, how about that blue right there? Let me see if I can find that blue. Again, it doesn't matter if I can't find it because we can always put a new blue on top. Still a pretty bright blue. This is kind of like the color of blue jeans. Put that on there. All right, so that's a little darker. Let me go ahead to the inside edge there. See, that's a left facing surface right there. This is right, this is left. So this inside portion is also left facing. Guess what? It's gonna go a little darker for that reason. And the deeper I go into the room there, the darker it can get. So I can really build in some contrast there between the outside wall and the inside deepest part of the window if I want to. Remember what I said about yellow being the complement of violet. So let's go ahead and add a little yellow to this purple, neutralize it a little bit. We're gonna get a gray. And blue's complement is orange. This is kind of an orange, let's give it a try. All right, so just neutralizing. You can always go back if you're not happy with the result and add a little more of the first color. In this case, it would be the purple. There we go, that's not bad right there. That's dropping it a little bit. And I'm gonna go down here and add a little bit more of this purple. Orange might be a good choice with purple also. You just have to experiment to find out what works best for you. Okay, so we have a dark side, a light side, a dark side, a light side. I think we're in good shape. Like I did before with the ramparts, I may darken just a little bit here, this distant edge, just to create a little more contrast with the outside, and then fade back in. I'm gonna do the same thing with this blue. Maybe smooth the blue out a little bit as I do it. Okay, so I'm kind of done with the blue. I did a little overshot there, but that's okay. I'm not too worried about it. So that, that uh, castle, castle tower is done. You know the towers allowed the people inside to see at a distance the attackers on their way, so it gave them an advantage as far as defending the castle. They could prepare for the attack by seeing the attackers come from far away. Now remember that cylinders are rounded surfaces, so you'll shade dark to light going from right to left, okay? Light side on the right side, leave it alone. I'm gonna come in with a purple over here. I might try a, a blue, maybe a combination of colors. Here comes my purple coming in from the left. Yellow by itself is not a great color to work with all alone because it never really goes very dark for you. Here comes some of that purple. And I might go ahead and pick up the yellow. Where'd it go? Helps to have it. Hmm, there we go and intensify this. This is a much brighter color right there. Let that fade out going to the left. Pick up the purple again. So it's constant experimentation. I might throw a little shadow right there underneath that cone, uh, cone-shaped roof, conical roof, I should say conical, because that's the word I used before. And then maybe just a little darker as we get down there into an area where there's less light available. Okay, getting those colors to blend and mix and look suitable. I, it looks like I used a pink up here on top of this conical roof and a pink is a red, really. So red's complement would be green. Again, we can go back to a green to cancel that pink out. You don't have to deal in complements. You can deal strictly with blacks and grays if you want to when adding, but uh, it's kind of more fun to experiment a little bit with complementary colors. I think it gives you a bit more, more of a challenge. I'm gonna add a little bit of warm, warmth over here with this orange. 
maybe a little bit of light coming in from this side, just a very uh, little bit of light coming in from that side, shading that side a little bit. That seemed to help a little bit. It looks a bit more natural there. And the inside of that room should be kind of dark. So I'm gonna go in with this purple. It's not a black, but it's a purple. Gives me a little bit of a sense of the depth of color in there. I'm gonna go with a dark to light fade inside the window, see how this goes. And if I wanna chuck it, or I'm sorry, if I wanna change it, I can. I'm not gonna chuck it. Chuck it means throw it away. If I wanna change it, I can. Let's go up here. So you see, with a point on a pencil and some attention to detail, you really can get in to some smaller areas and detail them out. Okay, those two towers are done. For better, for worse, they're finished. I think the only thing we have, oh, let's do the bridge. The bridge is like a Starburst candy, that's super simple. The top is gonna stay light, good deal. Uh, one side is gonna go very dark. Let's make this very dark over here. Now remember, that's dark orange, but it is still a bright orange. I wanna neutralize that with its complement here in just a little bit, and that would be blue. So let's get a blue out. Let's try this blue right here. Let's neutralize that. <clears throat> There we go. And then this side, somewhere in between, dark and light. Okay, so the bridge is done. Could be that you wanna show this grass here a little darker because it's in shadow. So let me go ahead and add a little shadow right there. While we got this pencil in our hands, I might drop a little depth of color back there coming forward. You don't have to do it, but I'm doing it anyway, coming forward. The uh, water, well, you can just have fun with it. I'm not sure about light and shadow. If the sun's on the right and there's shadow falling from the castle on the water on the left, this left side might be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna go ahead and just spin, blend with some blues and greens and yellows and let's see what happens. Of course, if I go under the bridge, right, it's gonna be dark under there. So I may drop in some darkness under the bridge. I get it, it's not perfect, but uh, this is okay. We're doing fine. Back here, maybe a little bit of light peeking through. So I'm leaving that lighter over here, a little bit darker. Remembering that green can be neutralized also. Green's complement's gonna be red. Gonna lighten up over here. Uh, this can be a little lighter there. This can be a little darker there, right up next to the castle. A little lighter there. You know, some of the redness of the castle wall might be reflected in the green. So let's bring a little bit of that down. That makes a neat color, whatever it is. <clears throat> that red combined with that green, kind of a purplish gray. Let's bring some more shadow under there. Let's bring some more shadow up along there. So we see a little bit of the reflected color from the red wall in the moat. Okay, what do you think? So we're done. This is all you need to do. You have your moat, you got your drawbridge, your opening, your two towers, your two windows, your ramparts left and right, and your three crenellations. 50 points, you can add more to it if you want. You don't have to. 50 points, maybe 60, maybe 75 if you knock it out of the park. And now you try.